increase of positions. This would be the place. Well, truth speaking, you know, I, what do you think we could get the funds from? You know, I, I, I was just, you know, like I said, I looked at the website and looked at how many positions were being offered now, and I was thinking along those lines. But, uh, and then I, I thought about any other possible <coughs> far reaching obligations that we have out there. Um, you know, I even bounced around the idea uh, regarding the, uh, the meal that we give, not giving uh, the full meal, but maybe. At least 0.85 or whatever, taking maybe a tenth of it from uh, in order to provide uh, for, for the adults' authority, that is, because we're not uh, binded by legislation, but you know, not to stop the operation, but to uh, actually uh, ensure that we at least be able to provide. Uh, call it to well, Bob, if you were there for that, I believe that's tied to the bond. It's tied to that bond and operating. Um, so I, I don't know how much is available there to go after because the dedicated millage is tied to the bond on a 15-year bond. Well, well, I was, well, the industrial authority bond. Any funds that you allocate for your that fire they, uh, rescue is going to have to come from the, the industrial park incorporated yeah. revenue. So yeah. I think Stephanie is going to give me the, uh, the amount that we pay on the bond each year. So we know outside of that uh, what is staff and everything else. You can just get their budget, thank you. All you gotta do is get a copy of their budget and they, it'll show all that. Because it's read at $3 million to my understanding uh, that, that go towards the authority each year. And I was just bouncing around the idea that I know we really don't have any, you know, we got some vacant parks right now and I know we're planning for the future and everything. I was just looking, you know, maybe if we pinched a little bit of it because we, we don't necessarily, we're not obligated uh, to the entire $3 million. But what I understand you're saying is a good portion of this money is going to pay that bond. bond right. And the rest of it's used for operating income. Yeah. And, and <coughs> salaries. And yeah. Salaries and office and uh, the whole list. Right. Would, or it, would, it be good and to, would it be good to know how much on that bond? Would, yeah, you can just get a copy of your budget and you can, you can see what the budget has allocated for the bond that you want. But again, remember, as I said, that whatever money you spend for fire rescue, has to, to come, come from the unincorporated revenue. Yeah. And it cannot come from the same. See, the, so, the authorities is basically that bond's incorporated and, excuse me, the middle is incorporated and unincorporated um, monies. You can't commingle those monies for fire rescue. Fire rescue can't come from any city residents' funding. Yeah, it's got to be outside the you with me? Outside city. Well, the general fund comes from the millage, right? Mm -hmm. So if we if we reduce their amount to say eight million, and it goes back to the general fund mill, it, it adds on to the percent that we give to the general fund. Then it's not intermingling; it's just just the general fund. Then. The fire department's not funded at the general fund. Yeah, it's not funded at the general fund. That's what I'm saying. It can't be funded at general fund because general funds everybody. Mm -hmm. It can only be funded out of the. Uh, Who is the fire department funding out of? It's special services. Special services. It's, it's all of the um, alcohol, business license, et cetera, that is generated in the unincorporated area. As a part of service delivery, it was um, agreed that that portion would be funded from the unincorporated area to avoid any possibility of a uh, double taxation of services. What all is covered in special service alcohol? Last, what, what all is it? How is special services funded? Sure. Um, business license, alcohol, tax, uh, what else? Service delivery. Your insurance premium tax. Right. Insurance premium. That should be the bulk of it. I've got a question about the fire and rescue. If I understood what you're saying, Joe, that just adding one person doesn't help. They really need a team of three in order to staff a truck. In the past, how have we increased the employees? Have we been able just to come up with three new positions in one year? I mean, it's got to be. If you can't do it incrementally one at a time, then how has it been done? 
Um, well, initially we we brought in uh, three, and we uh, utilized some of the staff that was already there but for a while and added to that. We have had um, uh, some volunteers um, that to do some ride-alongs, but basically we just had to add three at the time. How we increased our staff over the years. <laughs> well, I tell you, right now, with the way the budget and everything is, I really do not see how we can how we can staff additional fire stations. Um, I think it's going to be way too big of a task for us to try to take on at this time. I don't have any objection whatsoever at, at continuing to study it and continuing to look at it. I think now that between our volunteer resources um, and our paid staff. Um, I think we get real good service. I think we had one issue, what was 12 minutes? Uh, uh, well, but the, the deal is, once you, when you live out there, more especially, and you go to the citizen's house that, that burned down, and the fire department's a, a block and a half away from the volunteer department, I mean, the fire department, you know. Yeah, and the house well, didn't burn down. I mean, the garage burned down, yeah. but the house didn't burn down. Well, they saved it, the house. Yeah. Yeah. It makes them question their taxpayer dollars. That's all. Well, saying. you also have to realize that it, that it is a volunteer system. And in that particular situation, it was Memorial Day, and, yeah. and it was kind of a little bit different. But I think that uh, as we move forward, as uh, we, would be, we would be more prudent to actually look at our volunteer staff mm -hmm to try to uh, work with Chief Guyton and give him the tools, hopefully necessary, to help him improve the volunteer staff, <coughs> rather than us move into a staffing situation, which is just going to continue to burden the county. Um, I think there's ways to work through that right now without going out there and start staffing fire stations. No one, we don't have fire stations in a lot of cases that are, that are set up and that are prepared for staffing. You know, for, you know, for, for them to stay there, uh, typically the fireman does. So that brings on a whole lot of other issues as well. I just so want to make sure that, 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 that I'm understanding that in order to get additional firemen, we'll have to increase the special taxes you know, on alcohol and everything. That's the only way. And that's an agreement that we went mm -hmm. to. You can, you you can create a fire district in the unincorporated area. And you, you can assess those individuals in the unincorporated area an additional charge to fund fire protection. You would you would pass a millage in a special district, and that millage would be dedicated to fire services. Oh, I understand what you're saying, but I and that's a legitimate. I mean, that is a legitimate funding mechanism for government yeah, to do that. It's just historically, now it's going to be. What's your? I mean, I think that you express. A popular um, concern and that is I don't think any of us disagree that we would probably be safer and better off if we had full-time staff um, stations I mean obviously that would increase or decrease rather response time and it would be better off but I, um, but I think that historically the, the Commission has not pursued the, the fire districts, but it is a legitimate funding mechanism in some areas. Um, you know, I, I think it may be something we need to talk about if, if that's something that, you know, that the commission wants to, to pursue to have those full time. And that's just a discussion we need to have. And this may not be the year to do that. I agree with Bill. We ought to try to at least it doesn't speak affect this what budget. we got. Right. But there is something yeah. we need to think about long term, and that is how many What's the population? 107,000 people. And we're still 114,000, wherever it is. <clears throat> we're a metropolitan area, and we still have one full-time fire station in this old county located out here on 84, away from the majority of the population. And, and that is uh, not that is not the have, only criteria that we're going to use. Though. We have you know we're going to use some stations times. where we can put people in there. So, I, and yeah, that's important response time. But at some point, we've got to get out of this small county mindset of just having volunteers. This is no criticism of our fire department. They're doing the best they can with what they got. It's got to become a priority for us 
And, um, you know, we, I know the past commissions have built one Clyteville, one out here on Bemis, some that can possibly house some people. But um, we're going to have to take a hard look at this at some point. If, and I just don't want us to have some catastrophe where we wind up having to do this in hindsight, which we had already done it. How much will you have to raise, how much we have to raise the roads to man all of the fire, at least three fire stations? I know in Thomasville, they, uh, I think they did a million portion, I'm not sure exactly what. Um, a meal will yield you Just under three million dollars. Oh, I mean, Unincorporated. Only it's mm -hmm. not a million. About a million. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, because it's not That's county wide. Mm -hmm. And so, just from that unincorporated area, you're probably going to have to have all the equipment, manpower, and everything. Uh, you're going to be looking at close to two million. Two million. What about the special tax district? What all is involved in that? And what? Well, that's kind of what he was saying. You'd have to re in that create a special tax di district, and then that millage for that tax district could be somewhere between two, two and a half, three mil to be able to fund. Three, two and a half, three million. To mil, 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 mil. Yes, a mil is a, a million, million dollars. dollars, 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 dollars. So same, yeah, same difference. Same thing. Yeah. But you would have some rollback of, you would have an increase or lowering of your ISO rating, so there would be some uh, offsetting insurance cost savings mm -hmm. to the homeowners. The cost of uh, it wouldn't providing be a dollar, the dollar service dollar. is greater than their savings. Right. When you go from a nine to a five, the cost savings on your insurance is significant. Going from a five to a four or a three uh, is much more expensive from the provision of the service, and your return from your insurance is a lot less. So, and from a three to a one, there's no more discount. Three right. is the bottom level that there's a, a discount there. Uh, it's just a ballpark fee. In regards to the agreement, I guess, that we have to, uh, in the way that we fund uh, the firemen and what have you, we could, we could possibly revisit that, right? And yeah, as a commission or what have you? You, you, can, you can do that, yes, sir. And you, but you also can trigger a review of the service delivery strategy so that if you open up one, you can open up all of it and have to go back and renegotiate yeah, all the forms of it. I don't know that we need to look at it that way. I think that the direction that we might be wanting to look at in the future would be if we wanted to create a special tax district for the unincorporated areas and then uh, and then move that way. If that's, a, you know, if that's kind of the direction we're going. But I, I think we just need it. It's, more, it's, it's more discussion for a different time as we move forward. I just think right now it's, uh, we just can't get there today. I just don't see how we do it. I agree. That would be a that would be a great retreat discussion. Yeah, that's something on long range planning we need to look at. Stephanie has, year, so. Stephanie has the answer to the question concerning the bond. Um, there are two bond issues associated with the industry. The first was the 1996 bond, and the debt service for 2014 is 370 thousand dollars in principal and 85 thousand in interest. Then you have the 15 million dollar issue from 2008. And the 2014 debt service on that is 780,000 in principal and 897 in interest. What's the total of the two two bonds, principal and interest? Uh, two, 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 right, just a little over two million, two point one million. So that leaves them roughly 900,000 for all operating expenses and marketing and everything. So what's what's the length of the bond? 15 years on the second one. There's probably 12 years left. No, there's probably 11 years left. Well, runs through uh, the um, the 2008 bond runs through 2025. Yeah, 12 years. And the 
1996 bond runs for 2017. I read it. Basically, 900 million is, is, is operations, right. staff and operations. Right, that's correct. Because um, you know the, the other other thing, you know, besides the firemen, I just really uh, <coughs> I'm glad to hear we're not cutting any of our staff as well. But I definitely don't feel we need to do any more on our side either. That's, that's what I'm saying, because the county government ourselves have taken the blow for all of the constitutional officers <coughs> over the last couple of years, and, and nobody else, you know, it's certain like we are. Share the love. That's all I'm saying. Page 7, 